So the rain has finally left us for now, but it's also left us with the ground pretty much just soaked. And as you can see, as I was walking through that area down there near my fence line, it's where all the water usually puddles and it's just soaked down there. So in the past week or so, we had near six inches of rain, uh, somewhere around there, and that's just left us with quite a few problems. All that rain left us with quite a few fungus areas there going on. So today, what I need to do is actually just kind of mow that down. If we mow that a little bit shorter now, we need to get some airflow down into the grass. Most of those things will take care of themselves. They're not gonna spread too much as long as it can dry out a little bit, which it looks like it's gonna be drying a little bit in the next couple days and in the next week. My growth regulator wore off like a week or so ago and I couldn't spray any more down because of so much rain. So the yard is just kind of shot up. So today I'm gonna be using the Honda to cut that. We're gonna bag that and make sure we get all those fungus clippings off of the yard. And then hopefully I'll get back to real mowing real soon and we're about to start some renovation on the front yard. So that'll all be coming as well. So one positive thing about all this rain has been that actually the, my existing yard has really come back to life and it's looking pretty good. So here you can see I'm mowing at just around two inches and this summer my ryegrass that was mixed into this yard, it didn't really go dormant but it looked a little bit stunted from all the heat. It just really didn't like the heat and now that it's cooled off just a little bit we've got a lot of moisture. It's coming back to life really nicely and the color is looking great again. So that part I am pretty happy about. Here closer to the camera you can see where I mixed in quite a bit of ryegrass last year. It has that really nice dark color kind of compared to all the other areas. So the reason in the future that I'm still looking at probably doing some renovation here is just the kind of the mix of all that's going on. It doesn't blend as well as I would like it to, but of course it's not looking bad right now either and I'm looking forward to getting back to the real mower very soon. So just got done mowing the backyard again. I'm pretty much mowing about every two days right now. There's one other thing though that I found when I was mowing that I kind of found interesting that I want to show you. First of all, there's all these fescue patches that are just filling in and filling in. Pretty much driving me nuts back here because they just do not look good mixed in there. You can tell this just doesn't blend. It sticks out like a sore thumb. I don't really know exactly what to do about it. So far here, I've just been pulling out fescue clumps because it's so wet. You can just pick up a whole clump and pull it out. Not the best solution, but it's really kind of driving me crazy right now. Here's, here's a good section right here. But that wasn't really the point of what I wanted to show you. What I wanted to show you here is, so these varieties of my bluegrass in my backyard are supposed to be cut between a half an inch and two inches. And I've always been cutting them quite a bit higher than that just because of how much heat I get and how much sun I get. There's a really high spot here in my backyard. I don't know what happened there. It could have been like an ant mound or something over time that kind of built up this spot. And so the mowers are cutting off this spot really, really low compared to the grass around it. And I want to kind of show you what it looks like. You can see right here it's being cut much lower because there's just a big high spot right there. So you can see how it you can see how it just fills in, it spreads really nicely when it's cut low. Plus the color looks a lot darker here than this kind of lime green stuff that's out in this direction. So just kind of an interesting thing I wanted to show you on varieties that are actually designed to be cut lower. Yesterday in my video I mentioned that I found a few grubs in the yard, but more than that I'm just finding a lot of these little moths flying all over the place. And those are sod webworms in just a stage of their life. So my audio decided not to work for this clip here, but I picked up this grub killer which you can find at most big box stores or otherwise I'll have a link to it on Amazon as well. So this is one that I'm going to be using and explaining here in this video. 
Okay, so here's the active ingredient in here that you're looking for. This will kind of give you an idea if you're looking at some other products to just kind of match the active ingredient here. And now also the back will give you all the settings and the requirements. It says not to apply to waterlogged areas, which honestly I kind of have just a little bit of waterlogged area right now. But really what it's saying in those things, it says here in the directions, is that it just might not be as effective in those waterlogged areas. So I just have a small section of my yard that's a little bit waterlogged right now. So I think that it'll be okay because it's just a very small section. Also here are the settings for spreaders in case you'd like to know that. I'll be using my Scott spreader like usual. And also the most important thing with this product is that it has to be watered in to get it into the root zone. So it says within 24 hours. Of course it's been raining like crazy here and now I actually need it to be watered in and there's a chance of rain tonight it probably won't happen because I need to get this product watered in but if it doesn't I'll just have to hit this in the morning with some water So I'm putting it down to two pounds per thousand rate. This is for grubs. This bag covers 5,000 square feet, which I just happen to have in my backyard inside the fence and out. And we're at a setting of 4.5 on this specific spreader. So this also recommends six feet in between your passes. So for the first couple passes, if you want to, you can actually just stop at the end of your pass here and actually pace off six feet or roughly six feet in between if that's something that you want to do. But otherwise, after a couple passes, you can just use your eyes visually, just kind of see how far it's throwing to each side. And the nice thing about this product too is that it's light in color, so when you are spreading, you can pretty much see exactly where it's going. So it's kind of up to you if you want to do that whole pacing part. That's what it recommends for the space in between passes. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and found some value in it. Check out some more of my videos for a lot of lawn care topics. Thanks so much for watching this one. We'll see you next time.